Hello students of standard 10. Welcome to the e-learning classes of DAV Moyle Public School. Subject Science. Our today's topic is Heredity and Evolution. And subtopic is Heredity. Heredity. The most obvious outcomes of the reproductive process still remains the generation of individuals of similar designs. The rules of heredity determines the process by which traits and characteristics are reliably inherited. Let us take a closer look at these rules. Inheritance trait. What exactly do we mean by similarities and differences? We know that a child bears all the basic features of a human being. However, it does not look exactly like its parent and human population shows a great deal of variation. Rules for the inheritance of traits Mendel's contribution The rules for inheritance of such traits in human beings are related to the fact that both the father and the mother contribute particularly equals amount of genetic materials to the child. This means that each trait can be influenced by both parental and maternal DNA. Thus, for each trait, there will be two versions in each child. What will then the trait seen in the child be? Mendel's worked out the main rules of such inheritance and it is interesting to look at some of his experiments from more than a century ago. Mendel used a number of contrasting visible characters of garden peas, round, wrinkled, seed, tall, short plants, white, violet flowers and so on. He took pea plant with different characteristics. A tall plant and a short plant produced progeny from them and calculated the percentage of tall and short progeny. In the first place, there were no halfway characteristics in the first generation of F1 progeny. No medium height plants, all plants were tall. This meant that only one of the parental traits are seen, not some mixtures of the two. So the next question was, were the tall plants in the F1 generation exactly the same as the tall plants of the parent generation? Mendelian experiment tests this by getting both the parental plants and these F1 tall plants to reproduce by self-pollination. The progeny of parental plants are of course all tall, however the second generation or F2 progeny of the F1 tall plants are not all tall, instead one quarter of them are short. This indicates that both the tallness and shortness traits were inherited in the F1 plants, but only the tallness traits was expressed. Thus, two copies of the traits are inherited in the each sexually reproducing organism. These two may be identically or may be different depending on the parents. A pattern of inheritance can be worked out with this assumption. In this, both capital T and capital T small t are tall plants while only small t small t is a short plant. In other words, a single copy of capital T is enough to make the plant tall while both copies have to be small t for the plant to be short. Traits like capital T are called dominant traits while those have behave like small t are called recessive traits. Work out which traits would be considered dominant and which on recessive. 
what happens when p plants showing two different characteristics rather than just one are bred with each other what do the progeny of the tall plants with round seeds and the short plant with wrinkled seeds look like they are all tall and have round seeds tallness and roundness seeds are thus dominant traits but what happened when these f1 progeny are used to generate f2 progeny by self pollination a mendelian experiment will find that some f2 progenies are tall plants with round seeds and some were short plants with wrinkled seeds however there would be also some f2 progenies that show the new mixture some of them would be tall but have wrinkled seeds while others would be short but have round seeds thus the tall or short traits and the round seed and wrinkled seed traits are independently inheritance now the question arises how do these traits get expressed how does the mechanisms of heredity works cellular dna is the formation source for many proteins in the cell a section of dna that provides information for one protein is called the gene of that protein how do proteins control the characteristics that we are discussing here let us take the example of tallness as a characteristic we know that plants have hormones that can trigger growth plant height can thus depend on the amount of particular plant hormones the amount of the plant hormones made will depend on the efficiency of the process for making it consider now an enzyme that is important for this process if this enzyme work efficiently a lot of hormones will be made and the plant will be tall if the genes for that enzyme has an alternation that makes the enzyme less efficient the amount of hormones will be less and the plant will be short thus genes control characteristics or traits if the interpretations of mendelian experiments have been discussing are correct the both parents must be contributing equally to the dna of the progeny during sexual reproduction we have discussed this issue in the previous chapter if both parents can help determine the traits in the progeny both parents must be contributing a copy of the same gene this means that each p plant must have two sets of all genes on inherited from each parent for this mechanism to work each germ cell must have only one gene set how do germ cells make a single set of genes from the normal two copies that all other cells in the body have if progeny plants is inherited a single whole gene set from each parent then the experiment look at the figure shown in the slide this is because the two characteristic r and small y would then be linked to each other and cannot be independently inherited this is explained by the fact that each gene is present not as a single long thread of dna but as separated independent pieces are called as chromosomes thus each cell will have two copies of each chromosome or one each from the male and female parents every germ cell will take one chromosome from each pair and these may be of either maternal or paternal origin when two germ cells origin or combine they will restore the normal numbers of chromosome in the progeny ensuring the stability of the dna of the species such a mechanism of inherited explains the result of mendel's experiment and is used by all sexually reproducing organ organisms but all sexually reproducing organisms also follow similar rules of inheritance can we work out how their inheritance might work 
sex determination we have discussed the idea that the two sexes participating in sexual reproduction must be somewhat different from each other for a number of reasons how is the sex of a newborn individual determined different species use very different strategies for this some rely entirely on environmental cues thus in some animals the temperature at which fertilized eggs are kept determine whether the animals developing in the egg will be male or female in other animals such as snails individuals can change sex indicating that sex is not genetically determined however in human beings the sex of the individual is largely genetically determined in other word the genes inherited from our parents decides whether we will be boy or girl but so far we have assumed that similar gene sets are inherited from both parents if that is the case however can genetic inheritance determine sex the explanation lies in the fact that all human chromosomes are not paired most human chromosomes have a maternal and a paternal copy we have 22 such pairs but one pair called the sex chromosome is odd in not always being a perfect pair women have a perfect pair of sex chromosome both called x but males have a mismatch pair of pairs in which one is a normal sized x while the other is shorter one called y so women are double x while men are xy now we can work out what the inheritance pattern of x and y will be determined look at the picture shown in the slide all children will inherit an x chromosome from their mother regardless of whatever they are boy or girls thus the sex of the children will be determined by what they inherit from their father a child who inherits an x chromosome from her father will be a girl and one who inherit a y chromosome from him will be a boy now it's time to check your knowledge about today's topic here are some questions as your assignment i hope you understand today's topic we again meet with new video till then stay at home be safe be happy